core. <clears throat> and welcome as we continue our focus and look at the book of Job. And let me do my share screen. So here we go. And I presume you can see this. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So one of the things I saw, and actually it was a Super Bowl ad for something called Microsoft Copilot, which I guess yeah. is supposed to be a user friendly, <laughs> Jerry shaking his head, a user uh, AI. So I said, oh, I'm going to give it a try. I asked Copilot to create an image of the biblical character Job talking with his three friends. And so I would say AI has a has <laughs> one a is way. Job. I don't know. They, <laughs> they, they, they all look way too happy to well, be. Well, no, Job. they all look the same. They all look like the same guy. It yeah, might, it might be. Like I, I don't know. Uh, you think, they uh, are the same guy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, so uh, I actually felt good. But, <laughs> but but and I didn't post this. I actually asked it to create a poem. I think, Jerry, you showed me this. Somebody showed me this. Create a poem about uh, Job's, um, Job's patience. Oh, I did a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it created a long poem. And I think it missed the whole point of of Job, <laughs> but, <laughs> but but it, it was actually pretty well done. It's frighteningly well done. So yeah, you're going to continue chat, writing chat. your own songs, though, right? Yeah, yeah, that that would be well, interesting. I, ask it, I, I tried to yes. use Chat. It was Chat GPT. Yeah, yes, and it was something about Moses, and it was like totally wrong. <laughs> it was just oh, that's so far off. But but well, somebody, or oh, maybe maybe it was Rabbi Diamond, or somebody said they just real time. I think I, I think I. Yeah, I think I was sitting with Rabbi Diamond actually having lunch. And he said, you know, write a, a poem about something in Shakespearean verse. So it's iambic pentameter, which some uh -huh. of you all know what that means. Yeah. And it did. And it was actually, it's 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 somewhat frightening, I would say. Uh, Bryce. Yeah, just a quick question about this experience. Um, when you say that it was uh, quite well written, but missed the point entirely, what I mean is, the uh, question is, was it really good on the form? But the but the the yeah, that was beautiful rhymes, and, and it was oh and, yeah, you know, yeah, but but that's that's just all surface. But there's yes. no there's yeah, no no, no. I, I would, behind I, it. There's I, I would, no yes, content. I, yes, I wouldn't expect depth, but it was a nice poem about faith and perseverance and patience and loyalty. Um, it it was. I, I couldn't write, you know, it took like, I don't know, 20 seconds. So so it's it's it is a new world out there. But we go back in time about, I don't know, somewhere in 1800 years or so, or maybe not quite that far. Uh, may, no, actually, a lot further. This is probably written during Babylonian exile. So go back 2000 years before AI to the book of Job. So I, once again, I we're going to try and go quickly. I know this is taking a long time. The book is not a short book, and as you know, if you keep an eye on 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 the chapters and verses, I am skipping a lot. Um, but remember, the basic outline is Job is being visited by his friends, who I would say, with increasing impatience, are explaining uh, why Job is suffering. And namely, the basic idea of the friends is that you must be suffering for a reason because God is just. Therefore, ultimately admit your sins and um, repent and, and maybe things will get better for you. I'm, I'm, I'm greatly uh, simplifying. And he has three friends and we're gonna see one other friend depending on how far we get tonight uh, is also going to chime in. So um, let's see. Uh, uh, last time Bryce read the role of Job. Would someone else like to take a, a, a crack at reading? Well, this is actually, this is not Job. So this is Zophar. So would someone like to read Zophar? Sure, why not? Thank you. Then Zophar, the Naamathite, said in reply, is a multitude of words unanswerable? Must a loquacious person be right? Your prattle may silence men. You may mock without being rebuked and say, my doctrine is pure. 
and I've been innocent in your sight. I stop for a second. You're probably reading from Safaria. Yeah. Yeah. Read from, it's read different. from the screen because I have I have edited a lot. So you edited Job. Oh I edited Job. I have <laughs> verses one, two, five, and twelve on the page here. Okay. Is that like uh well, Fibonacci yeah. sequence or what? Okay. Um, <laughs> it's like the verses right. of the Father D, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. That, that's okay. very good. Yeah. It's the reform version of Job. Yes. Yeah. I was, I was <laughs> reading from, from the other one just because the font was bigger. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I just zoomed in. All right. Then Zophar, the Namathite, said in reply, is a multitude of words unanswerable? Must the loquacious person be right? But would that God might speak and talk to you himself? Uh, so the meaning of Hebrew is certain there. A hollow man will get understanding when a wild ass is born a man. So basically the idea is, uh, Job, you don't know what you're talking about, even though you're saying it very eloquently with lots of words. Uh, yeah, Kushner quotes one commenter as saying, there is little new to say, however many ways there are to say it. I actually like that as a phrase. Uh, so far, um, I don't think I stick with so far. Uh, because he doesn't seem to really add, add anything new to the argument. Hmm. Okay. Um, Jerry, you want to continue? You can read Job if you like. But yeah, okay. st stick to the screen. Should do it falsetto or not? Okay. So then Job said in reply, Indeed, you are the voice of the people, and wisdom will die with you. But I, like you, have a mind. I am not less than you. Who does not know such things? My eye has seen all of this. My ear has heard and understood it. What you know, I also know. I am not less than you. Indeed, I will speak to the Almighty, and in I insist on arguing with God. But you invent lies. All of you are quacks. Hear now my arguments. Listen to my pleading. Will you speak unjustly on God's behalf? Will you speak deceitfully for him? Will you be partially toward him? Will you plead God's cause? Will it go well when he examines you? Will you fool him as one fools men? I think I have a comment. Oh, okay, let's keep going. Keep quiet, I will have my say. Come what may upon me. How long? I will take my flesh in my teeth. I will take my life in my hands. He may well slay me. I may have no hope. Yet I will argue my case before him. Is this too, and is my salvation, in this too is my salvation, that no imp impious man shall come into his presence? Ultimately, what Job is saying is, I want to, I think two things we're going to see increasingly, Job saying, I want to take my case before God, I want to argue with God. In effect, I, I always describe this as Job uh, demands that God show up as judge, jury, and defendant in the case of Job versus God, and lo and behold, God does show up, pretty powerful, but but also, um, I, I like the idea that Job is criticizing these three visitors for almost falsely, uh, I would say falsely and blindly defending God. Um, I think the next one, yeah, okay. So there's an interesting thing we're going to see here. What's actually written is Lamed oh. Aleph, which means not. Um, and the, and the, the um, not the Karites, the, uh, the Masorites say, and, and you'll see how they say this, don't read it. Lamed Aleph, read it, Lamed Vav, meaning he may slay me, rather than, we'll see some other translations. Uh, Bryce. Yeah, so this this idea, oh, yeah. this idea that um, no impious man can come into his presence, yeah. but you see, that's an assumption that, uh, you know, that, that Job may be relying on without foundation uh, there's no reason that god could not allow a, uh, an impious man or person to come before them i actually think what job is saying here is that god wants honesty maybe i'm reading my maybe i'm reading into it um let's actually look at some some other translations of verse 15 oh i'm sorry uh jerry um I don't know how close this is to what you are speaking of, but somehow the name Alamid Vavnik. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so it's a very good question because as we will see, I'm going to actually jump ahead to, so this is actually just a copy, a scan from my copy of the book of Job. 
And it says here, uh, you know, there's, there's writing and then there's Lamed Aleph with an asterisk. And if you go down to the bottom of the page, it says in verse 15, read it, uh, kara, which means read Lamed Vav. Um, yes, you're right. There is a thing called Lamed Vavniks. Um, the, the, he, the, the numerical value of Lamed is 30 and the numerical value of Vav is six. And so there is a mystical tradition that in any one time, there are 36 totally righteous people, probably the tradition says Jews in the world, and almost the survival of humanity depends on those people. And they don't know who they are. You might be one of them. Um, so so, um, so anyway, it, it's a great question, but it has nothing to do. The word Lamed Aleph means is a negation means no, lo, you know, lo yisagoyel goy ha'oreb, nation shall not lift up sword against nation, uh, lo terzach, thou shalt not murder. Lamed vav may have exactly the same sound as lamed aleph, but that means him or to him. Okay, uh, you, you're muted, Jerry. I don't know if you have a reaction to that, but but I'm not talking about the numerical value of that. I, I realize that, but the Lamed Vavnik, is that a righteous person? Is a righteous person. Is that what you said or not? Yes. Is it? Yes. Yes. But okay. but there they're talking about this 36 of them. The reason okay. they're called Lamed Vavniks is the idea that there are 36 of them. Uh, okay. Jim. Jim. Uh, on 15, yet I will argue my case before him. Okay. Let's get to some translations. Oh. Okay, so here again, translation issues. So it's Hain Yik 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 Talani. Hatal means to slay. Mm -hmm. um, and Yachar Ayachel. Ayachel means to, uh, to await or hope. Uh, then we have a verb meaning to decide or judge. And um, so this is the translation, the JPS 1985. Um, I think this is the one that we just read. Um, but there's other ones. An older translation is, though he slay me, yet I will trust in him, but I will argue my ways before him, reading low as him. But if you read it as, as won't, Stephen Mitchell, some of you have a Mitchell translation of text, and he tends to be much more literal. And he reads it as he may kill me, but I won't stop. I will speak the truth to his face. Um, and I can't remember if I have. No. Do I have? No, I don't have another translation. No, so, so there's lots of different possibilities well, uh, here. Okay. Well, well, my question <laughs> applies to all of them. Sorry. Because oh, go ahead. Yeah. It, it appears to me when I read it that as soon as God shows up, Job shuts up and he yes. doesn't argue. So. He, he's Job didn't do what he said he was going to do. Yes. So, yeah, I think, yes, you're right. And it's it's an interesting aspect of this story. Job demands that God shows up and God has about a three, I don't know, a two or three chapter speech. And Job basically says, I give in. And we're actually going to look at, I have, a, I have I think, 10 translations of that line. Uh because uh, okay. there's different possible ways uh, to read it. But but you're right. Job doesn't continue to argue his case before God. You're absolutely right. Uh, Jerry. You know, I, I, I'm reading this and just like an overall view of it is you know, Job's kind of looking at God as like kind of like a zealous prosecutor. He just keeps going after him. Yes. You know, and um, wants him off his back. Wants <laughs> him to leave him alone, basically. And um, so he's pushing it to a point where it's either going to break and he's going to die or he's going to be free, which is intriguing. And so he says right here, I'll argue my case before him. Fine. And this too is my salvation that no impious man can come before. Him. So in other words, if I end up in front of him, well, then it says here that no Im impious man can come before him. Well, then, then there he is. Then that's, a, then, then who am I then if I come before him? And, um, you know, so now uh, I, 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 I can't be uh, impious. Right. And so he's hoping that that'll be his get out of jail card. Yeah, um, I think I think Job insists the way I the way I read this is that Job is insisting on being honest in front of God and not just offering sort of 
empty praises. If God is doing it, it must be okay, and it must it must be all right. I, I'm giving him less credit. I'm I'm okay. I'm saying he's just saying, hey, if I appear there and I'm not an instantly zapped or vaporized, then <laughs> then I'm not impious. <laughs> <laughs> And Irwin's been zapping his nose. Okay. He's playing uh, a holy trumpet. That being said. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> go ahead, Bryce. <laughs> uh, go, ahead, go ahead, Bryce. Uh, can you go to the next page again? Yes. Oops. I just want to, to contribute a little bit. In the Latin down below, mm -hmm. the translation that we're reading is somewhat archaic. And I want to make sure that people don't think that should in this case means that God ought to. Oh, right, right, right. Yes. That's not what it what it means is when in an archaic statement, although he should kill me, what that means is although he might kill me. Right. I will trust in him. But that's an archaic, uh, yes. archaic English. And then I would also yeah. add the Vulgate is probably the first Christian translation here. It's a translation into Latin. And... And, you know, it. this is certainly sort of emphasizing faith. And I'm embarrassed to say I'm not 100% sure what reprove means. Does, does this mean I will correct my ways in his sight? No, I, I think to reprove means that I will prove again. Okay. I actually I'm not I'm not sure about that but okay. Well it's well it, what I'm saying is in the modern English reprove means something else. Yeah, well, we're looking at an old trans yeah, an old Yeah, English I don't know how old the translation is. The Vulgate itself is old, but I don't know how old the translation of the Vulgate into English is. So I don't know and well, anyway. I think I think I don't think that they possibly could have meant that he ought to kill me. No, I, I no, 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 you should. I absolutely agree with you. But but on I will reprove my ways reprove. and is yeah, I, I think I think it's carrying the sense that um I will I will sort of mend my ways. Uh you but get the I'm, OED there, Bryce. <laughs> I, well, I don't know. I'm gonna look I'm gonna look it up. Censure? Here. Could it be censure his ways? Yeah, censure, that's it's right. Reprove his censure. So I will censure, meaning I will correct my ways. Um which is, you know, it's it's certainly there's a lot of different ways of reading this. And okay. Okay, so does somebody want to read Job? Bryce, it looks like it's in your hands again. You are our Job. Right. Okay, okay, thank you. What does that mean? Why does he always make you Job here? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. It's, I, I don't know. I want to inhabit Job for everyone. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Remove, remove your hand from me and let not your terror frighten me. Clearly he's then talking to God me. here, sorry. Yes. Remove your, okay, I'll start. Remove your hand from me and let not your terror frighten me then summon me and I will respond or I will speak and you reply to me. How many are my iniquities and sins? Advise me of my transgression and sin. Why do you hide your face and treat me like an enemy? So Job here in the speech is pleading with God for justice. Bryce, but mortals read. languish and die. Man expires. Where is he? So man lies down never to rise. He will awake only when the heavens are no more. Only then be aroused from his sleep. If a man dies, can he live again? All the time of my service, I wait until my replacement comes. Water wears away stone. Torrents wash away earth, so you destroy man's hope. And I am, I think, I, Kushner, read this, particularly this line, if a man dies, can he live again? One way of, of hoping for justice, you know, the one answer to the enigma of when bad things happen to good people is we're going to get our reward or our punishment in the afterlife. But Job is not relying on the afterlife. He wants uh, justice in this life. Now, Eliphaz is going to respond. So we need another reader for a testy Eliphaz. Just a few lines. <laughs> go ahead, Henry, unmute and go ahead. 
<laughs> Eliphaz the Timonite said in reply, does a wise man answer with windy opinions and fill his belly with the east wind? Should he argue with useless talk, with words that are of no worth? You subvert piety and restrain prayer to God. Your sinfulness detects, dictates your speech, so you choose crafty language. Your own mouth condemns you, not I. Your lips testify against you. Were you the first man born? Were you created before the hills? Have you listened in on the counsel of God? Have you sole possession of wisdom? What do you know that we do not know or understand that we do not? Among us are gray-haired old men, older by far than your father. The wicked man rise in torment all his days. Few years are reserved for the ruthless. He is never sure he will come back from the dark. The sword stares him in the face. Troubles terrify him. Anxiety overpowers him. Like a king expecting a siege. For he has raised his arm against God and played the hero against the Almighty. So, yeah, so Eliphaz is pretty much reacting the same way. You know, if you're wicked, you're going to be punished. If you're just, you're going to be fine. Okay, Job, uh, a.k.a. Bryce. Okay, I just want to let you know, I, I looked it up. There is an obsolete definition of reprove, meaning either to disprove or refute. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it would be interesting to know. I mean, I, I haven't checked. I probably am just quoting a, a, a commentary which says that the the Vulgate translated it that way, but uh, that's why I'm translation is a fan, is a fascinating issue. Okay, Job is yes. going to respond. I would also talk like you if you were in my place. I would barrage you with words. I would wag my head over you. Here, I think he's talking to Eliphaz. Mm -hmm. I would encourage you with words. My my moving lips would bring relief. In his anger, he tears and persecutes me. He gnashes his teeth at me. My foe stabs me with his eyes. Let him arbitrate between a man and God as between a man and his fellow. So Job the defendant is appealing to God, as I mentioned before, to be both plaintiff and judge, and I would add jury. Yet know that God has wronged me. He has thrown up siege works around me. I cry violence, but I am not answered. I shout, but can get no justice. My odor is repulsive to my wife. I am loathsome to my children. Even youngsters disdain me. When I rise, they speak against me. All my bosom friends detest me. Those I love have turned against me. My bones stick to my skin and flesh. I escape with the skin of my teeth. Pity me, pity me, you are my friends, for the hand of God has struck me. Why do you pursue me like God, maligning me insatiably? So first Job turns to his friends, and when they fail him, he has turned to God. Oh, that my words were written down. Would they were inscribed in a record, incised on a rock forever with iron stylus and lead. But I know that my vindicator lives. In the end, he will testify on earth. Okay. Uh, Cheryl, you have your hand up. Um, yeah, two, three pages ago, you know, Job is talking about children, but his ki his children have already died at this point. Yes. And uh, I, I, you know, what's going on here? They're already gone. Yeah. So what's going on here, as we've said once or twice, the poem that we're reading doesn't seem to be aware of the fable. What I'm describing of the fable is, you know, Satan and God have an argument, um, you know, and as a consequence of the bet, first Job's um, family suffers and he loses all of his 
all of his stuff, his assets, and so on. And he's still loyal to God. So Satan and God have a continue the discussion. And he says, you know, you can afflict him with lots of disease, but just don't kill him. Um, that's what I call the fable. And the ending is also going to be in the fable because he's, as we know, he's going to get his kids back and so on. But the poem seems really just to be an essay on theodicy, not an essay, but a poem on theodicy. Clearly, Job is suffering. In the poem, we actually don't know why Job is suffering. But, but there's no mention in the middle of this book, in the poem, of Satan, of the bet. So they, they don't seem to be aware of each other. It seems like that the 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 biblical editor has combined uh, those uh, those the, ha, and, and I I don't even recall I don't know if if Dr. Charles uh, has any clear idea of which comes first I don't I don't know that that scholars even know whether the, you know the the fable existed first and then a poem was written uh, or or um, or they they were separate. I I just don't know. I don't know. Well, I like the line twenty three. Oh, that my words were written down. They are. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Mazel tov. Yep, yep. <laughs> and then so verse twenty five. Then uh, Harold Kushner calls verse twenty five one of the most challenging verses in the entire book. And this actually, uh, I think I retyped this from a class that I took at at HUC. So there's lots that, that what we just read. I think is the, well, anyway, here are a bunch of possible translations. All of them are possible in the Hebrew. And, you know, I would leave to Debbie, uh, which ones seem to make sense to her. And one key issue is, 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 is the term goel, uh, which is often translated as redeemer. And, um, but it, but it, it but it's, in Hebrew, I guess biblical Hebrew, a goel is someone who sets things right, not necessarily a redeemer from sin. And one of the things that we'll see is the translation can often follow the translator's theology. So, um, so, so actually, let's look at the Vulgate, which I said is a Christian translation. I know that my redeemer liveth, and in the last day I shall rise out of the earth. Um, that's very different than than the than these other translation. I know that my Redeemer lives in the end. He will testify on earth um, um, and that he will witness at last upon the dust. This is <laughs> old JPS. Um, uh, then I might find redemption. This is like, you know, Kushner will tend to have his own translation. Uh, then I might find redemption in my lifetime vindicated while I am still here on earth. The new JPS, I know that my vindicator lives. In the end, he will testify on earth. Uh, the Koran Bible, I know that my avenger lives and that he who outlives all things will rise when I shall be dust. And okay, so that's, yeah, that's not, not so many different translations. But again, one of the joys of Bible study is, I, I, I you know, I always talk about this, that the Hebrew is, is open to many different interpretations and it's not uh it is clearly not that one is correct and others are are incorrect um the hebrew Hello, is my yes yeah go ahead. The, uh i'm looking at the latin vulgate right now uh the vulgate right now and it the word is redemptor in latin the skill i name called redemptor redemptor meus viva my redeemer lives and so uh, tempting to think that Christianity affected uh, Jerome's translation. Yeah, and I'm actually interested in the last part of that same verse, which they're translating as, yeah. in the last day, I shall rise out of the earth, which seems to be very different than the other translations. And is that, that pretty much what you're seeing in the Latin? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust your Latin here. Um, Bryce. Yeah, so I'm wondering from uh, the Christians here, that whether Christianity, um, not individuals necessarily or opinions, but as a body of belief, uh, sees this as presaging uh, uh, Jesus. Yes, generally in Christian interpretation, uh, Job is a type of Christ an innocent, righteous man who suffers. I got a book on 
trying to find. I, yeah, I'm just going to show you guys a bucket. <laughs> Um, this is this is a book, uh, the Bible with and without Jesus. Um, how Jews and Christians read the same stories differently. It's written by uh, Amy Jill Levine. Both both of the authors here are Jewish. Amy Jill Levine is a scholar of the New Testament, and Mark V. Brettler is a is a Bible scholar and has does has his own translations of the Bible. But I do think an important element here is. That, Okay. An important element here is I think generally Christianity reads the Hebrew Bible as presaging Jesus and Jesus' teachings. And some of that is um, because they're reading the, tend to be reading the Greek translation. Um, and then, of course, when Jerome comes along, he is going to write a Latin translation. But, but I think generally, um, you know, there used to be a joke. I don't know if it was Catholic school or whatever. Um, Bill, you can confirm this or or shame me by even saying it. But if you know, if you weren't paying attention in in Catholic school and and somebody asks you a question, chances are the answer is Jesus. Is that a good? Uh... Yeah, that's how I got straight A's in grammar school. <laughs> okay, good. Um, yeah. In 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 fact, Jerome does not translate the Hebrew to Latin all by himself. Mm -hmm. uh, he collaborates with Hebrew Jewish scholars as okay. well as Christian scholars in that translation. And do you get a sense whether he was translating the Greek Septuagint or the Hebrew Bible? Oh, definitely the Hebrew Bible. Of course, okay. he has recourse to the Septuagint, but that was part of his his interest is to translate right from the Hebrew. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Jim. You go back to where he's talking about his children don't like him anymore. Uh, let's see. I'm loath I'm loathsome to my children. Yes. Okay. Uh, and, and and we 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 brought up the the the, the notion that well that uh, conflicts with the fact that his uh, uh, Cheryl said that They're his gone. kids had already died. Yes, and, and you you said that that's the person writing the, the 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 poems didn't know it wasn't connected to the first two chapters. Yes, this the New American Bible is kind of gotten gotten around that by okay. by saying I am lonesome to the men of my family, not to my kids. To the, me, to the man to the man to the men family. of my family. Yeah, it's leave nay beat me and isn't that um i will ask debbie isn't that yeah when almost... when you say beat me it means if somebody gave birth yes yeah beten is like stomach or womb right. so it's so it's 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 even more explicit in the hebrew that it's his family that it, and it's the children of his family so it's so, the children of his family okay so this yeah. is just kind yeah. of trying to get around it okay yes. you know yeah. you can also you can also translate ruhi zara ruhi it means my spirit is um um unknown to my wife or whatever it's in i don't know where Strange. they came yeah, from zara. with my odor it's so weird yeah yes it's sort of like a there's a my, my strange i my my Ruach can be wind or breath. Um, so a Ruach Zara could be sort of a, a strange breath, right? Or, or a... Right, right, but it can be also my spirit. Yes, it's yes, my, you know? yes, yes, yes. That's, so, that's yep. very interesting. Yep. Yeah, so it would be fun, you know, then to, to look at other, uh, you know, other translations of that verse. So I'm actually curious, since, Jim, since you have the book open, how are they translating 1917? Uh, my breath is abhorrent to my wife. I am loath loathsome to the men of my family. Yeah, breath and actually might might be, at least ruach definitely can mean breath. Uh, rather, ruach can also mean spirit, but, but it definitely can mean uh, breath. So yeah, thank you for pointing that out. That's an interesting one. Uh, Jay. Yes. Uh... 
I'm a little confused. Good. That's where we're supposed to be. My work Good. here is done. Is this a true story or is this just a Bobby <laughs> Mice? This is a book of the Bible. I would say most of the rabbis of the Bible, even the rabbis of the Bible, doubt that it really happened. Ah, uh, thank you. So it's I would say story. it is It is a... Uh, uh, we used to talk in physics about a Gedanken experiment. It's a thought experiment. It's, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think we need to worry about the um, about the the literalness. In fact, I can't imagine anyone taking the story literally. In um, and, and just a few in just a few lines, can you uh, specify what this is all about? Yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna get to it. But but basically. Um, it, it, this can't be said enough. The poem, which is what we're digging into now, is the cry of someone who is suffering. Uh, he, and it almost doesn't matter why he's suffering. I'm not sure the text even tells us. Oh, we got some hints that his, he's got bad breath and his skin is, you know, is, 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 is in terrible shape. He is suffering and he wants to know why. And his friends are basically saying, um, God is all good and all just and all powerful. Therefore, you must have done something. And um, because we can't accept the idea that God would allow injustice to be in the world. And Job refuses to accept that. He says, nope, I know I haven't done anything to deserve this. And I want to take my case up, not with you, three and we'll see a fourth windbag who keep preaching to me basically what the bible says i want to take my case up with god that's what i think is going on here okay uh bryce yeah i just wanted to just to share with you and a couple of other physics minded since you brought up the word um that i was thinking of this this translation issue like, for instance, ruach and all these different meanings. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I think of it as being a sort of a superposition of meanings, any one of which could be read that way and be possible. Mm -hmm. But any translation is like a collapse of that wave function and yes. renders it into one, whereas the original was filled with multiple meanings at the same time and filled with multiple superpositions. Yeah, so that's actually an interesting question. One one of the things when I think about this, you know, collapsing of the wave function is English is far more precise than Hebrew. So when I write a sentence in English, it has a more limited range of meanings than when I write it in Hebrew. An interesting question would be, would the original readers of this in the original Hebrew see such a huge range of of possible meanings and i actually i'm not enough of a biblical scholar to know the answer to that um uh, to answer bryce and uh, the okay the none of the translation is really precise here yeah because i read it in hebrew it's not i mean yeah you can translate it in many ways yeah so the interesting question debbie is did the person writing it and the original readers see one meaning to the text or would they have recognized that there's a wide range of meaning? And I actually, okay. next time I talk to a Bible scholar, I will ask that question. Well, you um, know, you you know, just to, to give him, I'm going to call this modern, a modern analogy, Shakespeare, right? Relatively speaking, it's modern. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Shakespeare wrote for the people to understand what he said. Right. He didn't write it for the poor suffering people like myself in high school. Go, what the right, heck is right, this? Right. You know, no, it was, it was written for the people that, look, you want to sell tickets, okay? So it right. was written for the people to understand it. Right. I would think the same was true here, too. I, and, I and would, you know, it's just, it's just so long ago that here and, it is. And part of it has to do with the change in meaning in Hebrew. So, for example, um, nefesh in, in modern Hebrew means soul, right, Debbie? Would you say that? Yes. yes. But in biblical Hebrew, it means life. Uh, it, it, it doesn't. The biblical Hebrew doesn't talk about the concept of the soul that we do in sort of spiritual levels. Yeah. And, you know, and the Zohar is going to have, you know, I think three levels of the zo of the soul. And then and then Luria is going to have more levels of the soul. And Chabad has more different kinds of souls. But these are developments that take place over thousands of years. So sometimes when we're trying to translate and we sit down and read it, um, you know, we're going to apply 
um, the uh, we we well, have sure. to figure out what 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 kind of of of, well, of Hebrew we're well, looking. well sure so just like Shakespeare the colloquialisms are lost on us they're lost right. here as well right I mean maybe back then when somebody said order we knew it meant oh you know the spirit of the person it could just have been a colloquialism right. at the time I think right. that was right I, I like that and by the way. Uh, others, um, there was a Rabbi Silverstein who translated and said, "Hey, it's you know my spirit is strange to my wife." Said the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know it, it, that that adds meaning to it, right? Yeah. So you know, is it right? We don't know, but yeah. you know, the fun part is we can look at this and say, well, maybe that's what it was. Yes, yes. And the, uh, the Septuagint mm -hmm. translates it with a Greek word that means to beg or beseech. So I begged or I besought my wife. I have no idea where that comes from. This is verse 17? That's 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 good. Wow. Yes, okay. verse 17. Wow. That's, that's cool. On. What what's the Greek word? Uh, Iskuo. Okay. Yeah, that does it. Okay. So now you can see why Bill and I, why I love having coffee like, and spending hours with Bill listen? as we study. Yeah, Isn't that like listen in Latin or something like that? You said you said beseeched. Yeah, beseeched to beg. Yeah. Akuo um, means to not isko, but akuo means to listen or hear. Ah, uh, okay, okay. In okay. Greek, okay. not Latin. So I didn't listen to my Latin teacher well enough. At like an acoustics. Ah, uh, interesting. Okay. Okay, so let's continue. And I'm get back to where we were. Okay, so. Um, and now Job is going to be complaining not only are bad things happening to good people, but he's a little annoyed when good things happen to bad people. So, Bryce, why don't you pick up the uh, the theme? Is my complaint directed toward a man? Why should I not lose my patience? Look at me and, and be appalled and clap your hand to your mouth. When I think of it, I am terrified. My body is seized with shuddering. Why do the wicked live on, prosper and grow wealthy? Their children are with them always, and they see their children's children. Their homes are secure without fear. They do not fear, feel the rod of God. Their bull breeds and does not fail. Their cow calves and never miscarries. They let their infants run loose like sheep, and their children skip about. They sing to the music of timbrel and lute and revel to the tune of the pipe. They spend their days in happiness and go down to Sheol in peace. They say to God, leave us alone. We do not want to learn your ways. What is Shaddai that we should serve him? What will we gain by praying to him? So um, then we have three chapters, which I'm not going to present at all. And I will just note that Kushner says there is much incoherence in these chapters. He quotes Pope and the Anchor Commentary as saying chapters 24 to 27 are thoroughly scrambled. The JPS translation comments on the last half of chapter 24. From here to the end of the chapter, the translation is highly conjectural. And uh, I love this one. Kushner admires Professor Father Joseph Kotersky of Fordham University is saying, the incoherence of chapters 24 to 27, where it is never clear who was saying what, reflects the breakdown of dialogue as it comes to an end, with everyone speaking at once, interruption one, one another, and shouting over one another's remarks. So um, again, <clears throat> to try and limit the, the length of this uh, discussion, I'm just going to skip those chapters. Um, and now Job is going to continue uh, maintaining his own integrity in, in, uh, in uh, chapter 27. By God who has deprived me of justice, by Shaddai who has embittered my life, as long as there is life in me and God's breath is in my nostrils, my lips will speak no wrong, nor my tongue utter deceit. Far be it from me to say you are right. Until I die, I will maintain my integrity. Now, there's a section, again, we're jumping now to Job 31, where basically Job is arguing for his own um, 
I guess righteousness is a, is a good a word as any. And uh, I think in Kushner's commentary, this section has been called the Code of the Jewish Gentleman. So, uh, gentle Bryce, read on. I have covenanted with my eyes not to gaze on a maiden. Have I walked with worthless men, or my feet hurried to deceit? If my feet have strayed from their course, my heart followed after my eyes, and a stain sullied my hands. May I sow, but another reap. May the growth of my field be uprooted. If my heart was ravished by the wife of my neighbor, as I lay in wait at his door, May my wife grind for another. May others kneel over her. Did I ever brush aside the case of my servants, man or maid, when they made a complaint against me? What then should I do when God arises, when he calls me to account? What should I answer him? Did not he who made me in my mother's belly make him? Did not one form us both in the womb? Did I deny the poor their needs, or let a widow pine away by eating my food alone, the fatherless not eating of it also? I never saw an unclad wretch, a needy man without clothing, whose loins did not bless me as he warmed himself with the shearings of my sheep. Did I rejoice over my enemy's misfortune? Did I thrill because evil befell him? I never let my mouth sin by wishing his death in a curse. The words of Job are at an end. So this is the end of, of Job's response to his friends. He is also going to have a response to God later in the book. And then uh, we have another voice, Elihu. Uh, drops by. So someone want to pick up and read a little Elihu. I'll read Elihu. Thank you. <clears throat> These three men ceased replying to Job, for he, for he considered himself right. Then Elihu, son of Barashel, the Buzite of the family of Ram, was angry, angry at Job because he thought himself right against God. He was angry as, as well at his, at his three friends because they found no reply, but merely condemned Job. Elihu waited out Job's speech, for they were all older than he. So, oh, this is, yeah, there's a, I'm just going to do an interesting comment here. This is called the Tikkun Sofrim. Um, um, this is this is one of the commentaries in my book. It's just kind of interesting. Rashi and Ibn Ezra mention that this is one of the places in scripture where we have an emendation of a biblical phrase introduced by the scribes, tikkun sofrim, to avoid an apparently irreverent expression. The original reading, it is thought or alleged, was that he con they condemned God. Um uh, there, are, there are 18 such passages in scripture. Note that Elihu doesn't censure the friends for condemning Job. He is aroused because they did not find forcible arguments to refute uh, him as he deserved. So this is just one of the things that um, you will see if you look at your Hebrew versions of the Bible. Quite often you'll see a little footnote in the bottom. And typically it's written without vowels. So you really have to know Hebrew to understand what they're saying. And then you also, you know, what in the world is meant by a tikkun? Tikkun is a repair. So frim, a repair of the scribes. So you know, we saw before in a place where, um, where the text clearly meant to say that somebody, probably Job, was, was um, cursing God. The, the actual Hebrew says blessing God. And here the, 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 the thought is, if I understand this correctly, that the text that the Masoretes had actually um, had them condemning God, that the Masoretes actually changed the Hebrew rather than just change a translation or tell us to read it in a different way. So it's just one of these 
fun little bits of Hebrew uh, scholarship that you ought to be aware of. Um, and so uh, Elihu is continuing. Um, so uh, Jim, you want to continue? For Job has said, I am right. God has deprived me of justice. I declare the judgment against me false. My arrow wound is deadly, though I am free from transgression. What man is like Job who drinks mockery like water? This guy doesn't pull any punches. No. Young guy, get, by the way, waited for everyone else to speak, and he's going to let him have it. Who makes common cause with evildoers and goes with wicked men. For he says, man gains nothing when he is in God's favor. Therefore, men of understanding, listen to me. Wickedness be far from God, wrongdoing from Shaddai. For he pays a man according to his actions and provides for him according to his conduct. For God surely does not act wickedly. Shaddai does not pervert justice. Would you call a king a scoundrel? Great men, wicked? He has no set time for man to appear before God in judgment. Oh. So Kushner, um, summarizing Elihu, argues that modern critics, by contrast to traditional commentators, the traditional mm -hmm. commentators see Elihu as just another of Job's friends extending the arguments. Oh. Modern, modern critics are virtually unanimous in seeing El the Elihu chapters as an interpolation by another hand, namely another uh, writer just wanting to, I guess, maybe be more direct, as Jim pointed out, in, in, in condemning Job, and uh, to regard them as inferior to the rest of the book, noting that Elihu is completely ignored in the epilogue when God rebukes Job's comforters. Oh. Uh, Bryce. Yeah, I see uh, Elihu as the voice of uh, Deuteronomy. I'd say all the friends are the voice of Deuteronomy. Elihu is just, you know, doing it with a two by four. Uh, the the friends are a little little more gentle. Okay, so uh, I think I'm going to hold off. It's almost eight o'clock, um, and tune in next week for God's exciting response to all of this. And I, I would say, um, I'm going to stop sharing, um, but I would say in God's response, there are really two issues going on, and I'll try to remember to, to begin the discussion with this next week. Number one, God is going, in some ways, isn't really going to answer Job's question. Basically, God is going to say, I'm God, you're not. I am all powerful. I am the author of everything. Job never actually disputed that, uh, which is which is kind of interesting. But it's, you know, it's it's very eloquent. And God's replying out of a whirlwind or out of a tempest rather than a, out of a still small voice, as we've seen in other places of the Bible. But to me, the most interesting part of this is what does God say about Job's friends? And I, for me, and I would say not all commentaries I see focus on this element, but for me, that's the most interesting uh, element of this because God says, basically, I'm God, you're not, you can't possibly understand my ways. And Job says something to the effect, I, I'm dust and ashes. I am just, you know, I'm insignificant before you. And so I recant. I think that's the one where I have 10 different translations of that verse. Um, but God also says your friends are wrong. So for me, that's the most important and interesting element. This is not a clear resolution of the problem of theodicy, of why bad things happen to good people. But God is saying, or the, 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 the poem is saying, and, and, and the text is saying, that it's, it's, it is more complicated than just Deuteronomy. And it better be because we know Deuteronomy doesn't work. There are lots of good people who suffer and there are lots of bad people who seem to do well. So I, I love the idea uh, that the Bible is taking that, you know, head on and, um, and, and at least acknowledging that there is a problem. And the different, you know, different, depending on your theology, you're going to have different answers to the question 
of the Odyssey. And, you know, as, as you will see, and I'll, I'll discuss some of this, I am squarely with Harold Kushner, who is, you know, not a traditional uh, interpreter of, of the answer here. So other, other thoughts before I wish you all a good evening. Um, thank you. You're welcome. Interesting class. Yeah, thank you, Rob. Hey, welcome yeah. back again. Great. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be back. And I know this class is going on Excellent. more sections than most of ours, but um, it's not it's not a small book. What can I tell you? <laughs> it it, it kind of makes me want to dive into who decided that Job would be in the Bible and what who decided yeah. what who would what would be in the Bible and who decided what wouldn't be in the Bible and why? Yes, it, it that it, that in itself is a very interesting question, and I I don't know that we know in the case of Job in some, in, and I don't know if if uh, Bill if Doc Charles if you have any uh, any insight into this one, um, and on some of the books of the Bible there's actually a record of the rabbis of the Talmud debating things uh and um and the classic one is the song of songs and there you know akiva's quoted and the song of songs you know we, we studied that is erotic love poetry mm -hmm. and the uh the 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 reason it's in the bible is it's understood to be an allegory of god's love for israel and israel's love for god that's the jewish version and a christian version it's it's i think jesus and the church mm -hmm. um and uh, clearly, there was a debate about this because Akiba says anybody who treats this just as a body drinking song has forfeited <laughs> their share in the world to come. So mm -hmm. clearly, there was a debate, a debate about it. And I think some of the books you can you can see the debate and you can see reasons why they were included or not included. This one was included, and I can only think you know the rabbis are making this decision, and there's a lot of bad stuff happening to good people. That's, that's so. Yeah. So my guess is although they may have been uncomfortable with it. And there was a couple of places where I remember Krishna says, you can hardly believe that the rabbis allowed this verse to be in there. Uh, I, I like the idea that, that that debate and uncertainty is still in the Bible. Um, I personally, I, I am more comfortable like Job, I would say with honesty in addressing questions of God rather than, trying to come up with a a simple a simple pure faith that everything is really okay because god is really in charge i think i envy people who believe that but i certainly can't be one of them hi uh, jerry yeah so i was just thinking about what you said um, um i no, I, I think you you, you stated what i was going to say um the two parts let me go back to the first part of what you're talking about like it, people elevate something to a sacred national text when it's a national issue, you know, and, you know, the times were, were rough, right? Um, you look at any people at any time, look at, you know, a modern, well, now when, when a law gets to, you know, our, our Congress, it's because it's a big issue in the, in the world, you know, we, you know, we have to deal with it. So similarly, we could <laughs> say that, you know, this, this, these types of words were needed at that time. Um, and um, uh, I, I believe that it may be drawing also from um, uh, nearby cultures, right? Mm -hmm. Who had, uh, you know, uh, had had similar words, and and you know, not to get into details of, it, but just to say that that there's wisdom that can be shared, you know, amongst peoples, and and there was some of that going on here, um, and um, and and you know, in the end, you know, maybe they said, well, if you really want to put it in there, we're going to stuff some stuff under Elihu here. To try to you know make it just to squeeze it in there to put some glue around it, uh, and you know that that's you know what happens because you know obviously the Elihu. I mean even the name right is interesting Elihu yeah. right. He you is know, my God. Um, you know it gives it a little more weight right. Um, mm -hmm. So it's to say okay look you know we're going to use this as a little clarification and now we can squeeze this in here so um, you know so this is why the way I look at the different parts of what we just talked about. Yeah, uh, Bryce. Yeah, uh, I wonder if the uh, if the rabbinic debate might uh, might have been omitted because the debate was so contentious and the material so uh, uh, incendiary, uh, especially if it required actually editing it 
and changing the meaning of words because they were uncomfortable with even writing it down. So maybe the debate was also not included. Yeah, that's just it, an it, idea. It's possible, except the Talmud typically doesn't shy away from from vigorous debate. But um, but 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 it's possible. The yeah. the thing that I find so fascinating is, in spite of the fact that I don't know what is Job like forties, forty something chapters. We really only remember the first two uh, that Job is so patient and he says, you know, the Lord gives, the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We have a phrase here that, you know, my Redeemer lives and it's probably not so well justified in the Hebrew. Um, so even though the plain meaning of Job is to throw these difficult questions in our face, most of us, when, you know, if you ask most people, that haven't really studied their their Bible about Job. You'll talk about the patience of Job and the, you know, of the and the uh, you know the 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 faith of Job, and it, it's not there. So it's uh, it's fascinating, <laughs> um, in my opinion. So on that happy note, I wish you all the same struggle with this material that Job yes. has. I don't <laughs> wish you an easy. If, if you're looking for an easy reading and an easy uh, relationship with the text, you have come to the wrong place. <laughs> the good news is there's a money back guarantee. So uh, uh, see you Wednesday night. Julie, I don't know if you're raising, ra raising your hand or waving goodbye. Waving goodbye. Okay. So right. um, yeah, so so next Monday we'll get to God's answer, maybe even finish the discussion. And on Wednesday we're going to be reading about the talit and how to tie uh, the the fringes and deeper meanings of tying the fringes. With my apologies to Henry because I gave a talk on Kabbalah uh, on Saturday to the congregation up there in Merced, and a lot of that material was in there. But there's going to be other stuff as well. So good night all, and uh, and stay well. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.